morning, my name is Anna and today we are going over all of the books that I read in January, February and March of 2021. I'm not going to be able to see them all in frame. I have many books in front of me right now to go over for you all. I'm really excited for this because over on my um, bookstagram I do reviews on all of the books that I read, do ratings out of five for each book um, and it's just a really nice way of sort of engaging with books I find um, outside of my degree. So my ratings out of five are basically just on impulse um, because I get really bogged down in essays throughout term and thinking about like the absolute minutiae of a book so yeah my ratings tend to be more like did I like it? <laughs> How much did I like it? More about the experience of reading the book rather than um, its literary merit however I think I will at points in this video go into what I found interesting literarily <laughs> that's even a word. Before we get into the actual books themselves I just wanted to say a couple of things. So firstly um, the sort of text that I'll be talking about. So as an English degree student I read a lot. So I keep a list of everything that I read um, in Cambridge uh, for seminars, for lectures. I don't know if you can see that but it's a lot of stuff. I think I counted 140 things first term uh, roughly. It's a lot of poetry, a lot of extracts from novels, a lot of um, critical essays. So I'm not going to go into absolutely everything that I've read in the past three months today. For these wrap-up videos what I think I'm going to do is focus on whole texts that I think can go towards my Goodreads goal. At the moment my Goodreads goal is 80 books and that might not seem like a lot especially because I'm reading all the time but like I said it's because I read a lot of things that aren't necessarily whole books. I think I might bump that up but we'll see, we'll wait until I reach 80 I suppose. These past three months I've been doing the Renaissance paper. A lot of the books I'll be discussing have reference to violence against women, sexual violence and racism. I have to say that I personally have found this term very difficult with the amount of texts that deal with these difficult themes, uh, especially in the sort of light candid way uh, that some of them do because it was just a part of the culture. Also just to lay out some things so I've been doing Shakespeare seminars this term so there's a lot of Shakespeare plays I've been doing my renaissance paper and I've also been doing practical criticism paper however I haven't really read any whole text for that because it's been a lot of sort of unseen poetry but that is enough rambling from me so I'm gonna get on with telling you about books first book that I have is John Milton's Paradise Lost. This is an epic poem about Adam and Eve's fall from Eden. I gave this a uh, 3 out of 5, mostly because I really like the way Satan was presented. He's strangely compelling and I think a lot of critics find this in that he's strangely like kind of an attractive character in that he is active in the, in the narrative and we get to see inside of his head and the book actually opens with a focus on Satan. I also wrote an essay on uh, Paradise Lost for my renaissance paper and I wrote it on uh, the presentation of vegetarianism. Next we have The Country Wife by Witchley. This is a restoration comedy um, and I also did it for my renaissance paper and I did an essay on body and disease. I gave this a one out of five mostly because I found the violence against women really uncomfortable so I really just didn't enjoy reading it very much at all. A bit later in January I read The Man of Mode by Etheridge which was also for my restoration comedy essay and I also gave it a one out of five for the exact same reason. I just couldn't get into the plays at all, I didn't really enjoy them. For some leisure reading, while I was doing those two essays, I read And the Mountains Echoed by Khaled Hosseini, and I absolutely adore his other novel, A Thousand Splendid Sons, is possibly my favourite book ever, um, and The Kite Runner is equally heart-wrenching. Uh, this has to be, I think, my least favourite of his that I've read so far, but that's not really saying much because his other books are 
exquisite. I still really loved this one. My favourite part was the description of the tree in the village. I don't want to say too much because I feel like that's going to spoil it but I really liked the bit of the story that focused on the tree. It's really beautiful and I would recommend it if you are a fan of Houdini. We're going to get into Shakespeare now and I'm not going to hold this up every time because it's huge. This is my complete works of Shakespeare. The first of the plays that I've read for this term is The Merchant of Venice, which is a tragic comedy. I gave this one a four out of five, um, mostly because I really enjoyed the prince's failed attempts at the casket riddle. I have to get past the misogyny of it all and the racism in it is a little bit... It's a bit dodgy. And then after that, I read The Winter's Tale, also by Shakespeare, which is a romance play. I gave this one a three out of five. The most iconic part of it is Exit Pursued by a Bear. I think it's relatively iconic, but then again, most of Shakespeare is iconic. It was a solid Shakespeare play. I read so much Shakespeare in a term that it's kind of hard to distinguish which plays I like more than others because sometimes they overlap in my brain. On the mention of Shakespeare, the next thing I read was Hamlet. I got this cover for Christmas and it is so beautiful. This got a 5 out of 5 for me. It was such a delight to read. I don't want to read this book as just a comment on Shakespeare because it's not that. It's so much more. It's a rich, beautiful and unique description of the natural landscape of Renaissance England and it's also a look at the women's lives. I really liked it in comparison to Caroline Duffy's Anne Hathaway. I thought that some of the description of nature in this is just magnificent. Then we have another Shakespeare play which is The Tempest. This one got a 4 out of 5 and I think I was a little bit biased because in sick form one of my friends was in a version of The Tempest and I really loved watching it and I watched that before I ever came to reading it. Kind of maybe a little bit biased I think but I really loved Ariel and Caliban as characters. They're some of my favourites of Shakespeare's, particularly Caliban's description of the island. That moment is stunning especially coming from Caliban someone who is thought to be like slave-like or inhuman that he gets given this beautiful speech is really powerful I think the next Shakespeare play I read are you bored of Shakespeare yet we're not even halfway through the term the next Shakespeare play that I read is Richard II give that a three out of five it's a history play and I'm not uh, massively into the history plays but I really enjoyed in this one the symbolic moment of the the hollow crown and the mirror it was a really interesting sort of analysis exploration of selfhood and how it's tied to our social roles number 10 out of 80 we have King Lear I prefer Hamlet personally but I think that Kent is given some absolutely ingenious insults to throw at Goneril's servants including our unnecessary letter. They're just ridiculous um, and I think they're great especially in contrast to the absolute seriousness and you know tragedy of the play and I also like the play's sort of references to animals and the natural world and it actually does this the most out of any Shakespeare play and I'm really interested in eco-criticism as a form of literary analysis and then another play but not by Shakespeare we have The Changeling by Thomas Middleton now don't be fooled by the title as I was um there's not really any sort of fantasy elements in this text at all there's some references to uh, dragons to changelings but it's not really about that in any sense of the word. It's a dark comedy. This text I wrote an essay on metatheatre. I gave it a two out of five because the depiction of the madmen and again the sexual violence in it uh, made me very uncomfortable, especially from a modern sensibility. The treatment of mentally ill people is just downright cruel. My favourite part though um, was Elizabeth's speech where she feigns madness and she sort of has these really beautiful lines that you kind of want to make sense of but you just can't and then Beatrice Joanna's sort of 
condensing of time later in the play she gets mad at a clock and it's just it's kind of hilarious in the way that it's just so threatening finally a book not for my degree um i read david attenborough's uh, life on our planet this i got for christmas from my parents and it's a non-fiction slash biography text my favorite part was his account of the tribes in new guinea it's how beautiful this book is and I think he got a really good balance between biography so people would pick it up because it's David Attenborough and he's a national icon um, and also using that for a actual purpose to propel people to make a difference. Back to the degree books so I read Dr Faustus by Christopher Marlowe next I wrote an essay on it um on the human body this one unlike um Middleton's The Changeling actually has real dragons in it so that's what you're looking for this is the one for you I watched a version at the globe where they had these amazing puppets for the dragon and I also really liked the seven deadly sins morality play um I think that comes out of my medievalist leaning because it's based on um the medieval morality play style and it's like a little play within a play I really liked uh, reading this play actually um but I gave it a three out of five overall but it's probably my favourite of all the plays that I've read this term for my renaissance paper which isn't really saying much because I haven't really enjoyed any of them. Another play, <laughs> uh, Summer's Last Will and Testament by Thomas Nash. This is a comedy but it's got elements of dark comedy in it especially when it talks about um, disease and the plague and things like that but it it puts plague in the mouth of summer which is something you wouldn't necessarily expect and it gives it kind of a dark and raw edge i wrote an essay on this um and another book that i will come on to talk about uh which is the unfortunate traveler and my favorite part of this play was the country song elements to it and how he sort of relates to the country sort of atmosphere in that way. While we're here I might as well talk about The Unfortunate Traveller. I wrote on Nash's prose style in an essay. I must say that it does have scenes of sexual violence in it and it's very often horrific and brutal in many ways. It was quite a mentally taxing read. I prefer the way it's written over what is written. And we're back to the Shakespeare plays. So I read Coriolanus. I feel like Coriolanus is not a very appealing character. He just doesn't work in that way, I think. I give it a two out of five because I thought the characterization of speeches of Volumnia, Coriolanus's mother, were really interesting and the extended metaphor of disease and the decapitated body was also poetically really interesting and I like the way that it carried on throughout the entire play um, and sort of developed in multiple ways. I didn't really get bored of it. And I also read Troilus and Cressida. It's a tragedy romance. Um, and I gave this one a one out of five. I really did not enjoy Troilus and Cressida, which is sad because I quite like Chaucer's version of it. I feel like I should have my English student card revoked for a review of <laughs> Shakespeare that's a one out of five. Despite its like bleakness that talks quite readily to a 21st century reader, uh, the style and pacing really just feel like a step back at this point in Shakespeare's career. And the divided plot and the lack of satisfying conflict and just, yeah, I just didn't enjoy this play very much. Cersei by Madeline Miller. This cover is so pretty. This one my mum recommended for me to read. This is actually my mum's edition of the text. I gave it a five out of five. I really enjoyed reading this book which is odd for me because I'm not really into like Greek myths very much at all and all of the language of female experience, anguish um, and just general uh, the female perspective on the tales um was really enjoyable um, and the descriptions of motherhood and of the magical practices 
honestly I just really enjoyed reading it and it was really beautifully written as well. The last text that I read for my renaissance paper this term was Utopia by Thomas More. This is a novel but it's a parody of the travel narrative. I wrote an essay on the relationship of the novel to print and my favourite part was the framing sort of collage I want to say of like poems, letters, prints, all of that sort of thing that sort of start and end the novel and it's all supposed to like evidence that utopia is real, real and the internal contradictions and ambiguities that stand opposing that collage. It took me a really long time to read though, especially with how short it is. Um, I just couldn't really get into it, despite finding those things interesting. The 20th book of my uh, goal of 80 is another non-fiction text and this is Unquiet Women by Max Adams and this got a 5 out of 5 from me. It is so interesting, it talks about um, how we can find female um, experience female texts um, not necessarily in the traditional places so he talks about tapestries he talks about grave sites how we can learn about women um, now despite their consistent erasure from history my favorite part is when he analyzed um, different forms of narratives that aren't necessarily the traditional sort of book um, that we would consider the canon but how they are equally of merit gave voices to these women um, from periods that are considered so highly dominated by the male only sphere of literature and I'm really interested to explore some of the things he talks about um, in my medieval paper next year that is one quarter of my goal of 80 for the year we've got four texts left so if you've stuck with me so far i am so grateful i appreciate this video it's going to be so long so the next text that i have is men without women by ernest hemingway and this was lent to me by a friend actually who recommended that i read it it's a collection of short stories i really liked hills like white elephants as a standalone short story um which i read as an open-ended discussion um, of abortion. The text never really answers what its opinion is but I feel like that's consistent with all of the short stories in this text. I feel like it avoids giving an answer um, to anything and sort of introduces questions, people, places without building up a narrative to keep us comfortable in that situation and then also leaving us um, in this sense of just questioning and not really knowing what we've actually learned from these stories. I didn't really enjoy the masculine sort of bravado of this. I mean, what can you expect from a text called Men Without Women? Um, I must give it some kudos in that it's not to some extent like very traditional male bravado, but I still I still just couldn't really connect fully to a lot of the stories. Um, however, Hills Like White Elephants, as I've said, really stood out to me um, as a female reader. The last Shakespeare play, whoop whoop, is Antony and Cleopatra. Um, this is a history play slash tragedy slash romance. Personally, I would consider it a history romance. It's really interesting in comparison to Romeo and Juliet, for example. I gave it a three out of five. Uh, again, just a solid Shakespeare play. And so at this point, because I read so much of them, it's kind of hard to distinguish like that one's good. My favourite part of this play is the changeable characterisation of Cleopatra. I just thought it was really fun. Um, and the introduction to this text was talking about how hard that makes it to actualise as a play. I don't really feel like Cleopatra could ever be actualised in like a real person in a way that I would ever find fulfilling um, or that lives up to the way that I've read her. Especially when you have to deal with this mixture of like true person, legend and characterisation. We have The Well of Loneliness by Radcliffe Hall. I gave this a 4.5 out of 5. If it was just the opening of this novel, like if it was just like the first two or three books, 
I would have given it a five out of five. Um, I really, really love the opening sections of the novel where it focuses on Stephen's childhood and her sort of coming into herself um, as someone who lies outside of strict gender and sexual norms. And I really loved the way it was written, the mixture of like elegantly simple and clear writing that carries on the narrative um, and some moments of just extremely beautiful and unique prose and images that really just stuck with me. This went through a scandal where it was like they tried to ban it um, which is really interesting especially when it's being written at a time where other novels are uh, coming out and really exploring um, you know sex and sexuality that a book about you know a queer woman um, would be continued to be monetized um, really I think speaks to society's ideologies. It's really just about a woman living her life, trying to be accepted, trying to love and be loved in return. There are later in the novel bits that I don't like and don't agree with, especially um, the use of the n-word and the time scale of this book is so immense, it travels over so much time. I mean for example World War One is condensed into I think like three chapters if you want to know what sort of a time scale we're talking about here. Now we're on to the final book of March. I'm currently reading Midnight Library by Matt Haig. I've seen it all over bookstagram so I thought I would pick it up and give it a go. I found it for like four pounds in Tesco's um, and I've heard it's a really easy read. Thank you so much for watching this video. Um, I really hope you have enjoyed this book review slash book wrap up slash first three months of the year in reading. Comment below what your goals are for the year and if you have a favourite book that you've read so far and I hope you've been out enjoying the sun today. As my intro will show you I went on a picnic and it was so lovely. Please do like and subscribe if you're new here 